Welcome back, True Seeker. I'm making this video for all the baseball fans, especially the Cubs fans, who just watched their team lose in the one-game playoff and then in the wild card. If you're new here, I've been calling World Series outcomes from spring training because I understand how sports are scripted. The other year when the Cubs broke the 108-year curse, I guaranteed the Cubs were going to win the World Series in spring training. Not the first time I had done such a thing. It was very easy to see with the Cubs that year. And I'm going to teach you in this video what the Cubs breaking that curse had to do with them losing these last two games to Milwaukee and then to the Rockies. Let me zoom in on this screen so you can see something. Before this game was played, the Brewers had 44 wins on the road. They got the fives, a very special number. The next day, against the Rockies, the Rockies had 44 wins on the road. And the reason it doesn't show the 45th win is because this one counted as part of the playoffs. But for the entire season, it became their 45th win on the road. It shows the 45th win here because it was a playoff in the regular season. But both teams, the Brewers and the Rockies, got their 45th win on the road at Wrigley. And I want you to understand what's so special about the number 45 in light of the Major League Baseball and Wrigley. Remember, before the Cubs broke the 108-year curse, they hadn't been in a World Series since 1945. Now, here's what you need to know about the number 45 in light of baseball. 45 is the ninth triangular number. That means if you add 1 through 9 together, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9, it equals 45. And there's a group of people who really like numbers, and they're the same group of people who are credited with creating all the American sports, football, baseball, basketball. They're Freemasonry, and Freemasonry has a secret. It's a code of letters and numbers. It comes from Kabbalah. There's this thing out there called Kabbalah, which has a core belief that God created the world by merging the letter with the number. These Freemasons have built all the American sports around this secret code. If you write out Major League, notice the Gematria, 108. For some reason, my screen got so bright. Dull here. I don't know what that's about. Hopefully, it's not dull for you, but I just brightened it up. Major League has gematria of 108 and 45. Gematria is the practice of coding numbers into words. And 108 and 45 are both super relevant. On a Major League Baseball, there's 108 double stitches and not arbitrarily. Again, 108 and 45. If you want to know how these two values work, 108 is just with the alphabetic order. M's the 13th letter. The 13th letter, like how you went to the 13th inning, we're going to talk more about that. A's the first letter, J's the 10th, O's the 15th, R's the 18th. You can see it down here. So you're just adding up the word based on the alphabetic order. Now with the blue cipher, you're using the alphabetic order too, but you're using the rules of numerology. So notice M is 4. It's because you're taking the numerology of 13. M's the 13th letter. 1 plus 3 is 4. A's the first letter. J's the 10th letter. You take the numerology of J. Which, which is 10, which is 1 plus 0 is 1. O is the 15th letter, so you take the numerology of 15. 1 plus 5 is 6. R is the 18th letter. The numerology of 18 is 1 plus 8 is 9. So you're making each letter a single-digit number, then you're adding the word. Major League 45. Now look at how important 45 is to um, Wrigley. Wrigley equals 45. There hadn't been a World Series at Wrigley since 45. How about the name Cubs with the alphabetic order? 45. How about the state Illinois? 45. You see? You see? Been talking about this for years. This is how I knew the Cubs were definitely going to break the 108-year curse. And it's why the Red Sox just set their win record with 108 wins this year. This number is used all the time in Major League Baseball rituals. Go back and see the videos I did on Albert Pujols this season. His whole season with all of his scripted feats, they were all around the number 108. This number is used every year in rituals. So, for a little more lesson. Oh, 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 oh. 
by the way, I got to tell you one more thing. It went to the 13th inning. It went to the 13th inning, 1345, just like how I was explaining the Milwaukee Brewers with the M on their hat, the 13th letter, how they would beat the Cubs and pick up their 45th road win at Wrigley as they did. And then the score was 1-3 to three, like 13. And then the next day, the Rockies do it in the 13th inning. But look here, I got to clue you in on a little bit more. Alphabetic order, alphabetic order with rules of numerology. These are the two ciphers you learned. Back when I called the Cubs World Series, these were the only ciphers I learned. But since then, I've learned more about Gematria. And what I learned is if you turn the alphabetic order around, if you flip the alphabetic order around, you make Z1 and you count back to A is 26, and then you do that with the rules of numerology, you see even more. You see even more. Notice 13 with the alphabetic order and rules of numerology and the reverse alphabetic order and rules of numerology sums to 45 both ways. There's not a lot of words that are the same forwards and backwards, but you really can see more by learning this code. Like look at how the Brewers picked up their 45th win on the road at Wrigley. This is what I just talked about in my Patreon. If you're not following my Patreon, I'm telling people, you know, what games to bet on, how to make that money, and people are making a lot of money here. So anyway, I don't do this for money. I'm not about money. I'm about taking down tyranny and ending rig sports. But hey, I know everyone's got to eat and pay the bills. So if you want to make some money on these rig games, you're more than welcome to. But the point is, you guys need to stop investing in these sports leagues. You're investing in tyranny. The people who control these sports leagues, they are the tyrants of this world. They are the new world order. And sports are here to distract us. And the people who control these leagues, they love to punk a home crowd. They love to have you guys come bring all your money to the stadium, pay for these overpriced tickets to watch these overpriced, sellout, asshole athletes who are all in on the script. That's why they're paid so much. Come on, America, wake the fuck up. You think you have to pay an athlete millions of dollars to play a sport in his city? And do you notice how your cities, you don't even have people who are from your hometown hardly ever? You got guys from God knows where. They don't give a fuck about you. If pro sports were legitimate, you'd have to pay these guys, you know, $50,000 a year. They'd be happy to play professional sports for a living, represent their city, and make $50,000 a year. I guarantee it. You know, there's an overabundance of great athletes in this nation. Most of us males, we grow up wanting to be pro athletes, and a lot of us really are good at sports. And a lot of us who don't make it in the big leagues, we're working in warehouses for $30,000 a year. So God forbid if we got paid $50,000 to represent the home team, hell yeah, we'd be there. You know what I mean? Supply and demand. You guys don't know anything about sports, economics, nothing. Those of you who watch pro sports, this shit's so rigged and stupid. Look at how the Cubs even tied up the game last night. Let's be honest. 0-2, two outs. The only thing the Rockies pitcher can't do is give up a hit. So they drive in the tying run. What's that fucking guy do? He throws a pitch right over the middle of the plate with an 0-2 count and two outs. Why would you ever do that? I mean, you got Baez up who swings at junk in the dirt all the time. Just throw them some breaking shit in the dirt. You got four opportunities to do it. <laughs> Fastball right over the plate to drive in the tying run. I mean, you guys, the games are just so dumb. And as a good athlete, I saw it as a child. I knew pro sports were rigged when I was a child. A child. So what's wrong with you adults, huh? What's wrong? Especially when you got me here for years calling out the championships before the seasons even begin and showing you how it's all scripted. But look, I want to show you something awesome about the word baseball before we go. Look at the word baseball, 54 with the alphabetic order, 54 outs in a complete game, right? 18, 18 half innings, how about 162? 162 games in a major league baseball season, how about 54? Another 54? There's not a lot of words that have the same, have a double value in two of the four base ciphers. It's, it's relatively rare. But notice all these numbers break down to nine in numerology. Five plus four is nine, one plus eight is nine, one plus six plus two is nine, five plus four is nine, nine inning game. Again, you add one through nine, it equals 45 like major league. What's going on here? Just be hitting the wrong button. Major league, major league 108, take the 108 double stitches. June 3rd, you see this 63 right here? June 3rd is the 154th day of the year. Major League Baseball used to have a 154-game schedule. Abner Doubleday is the Freemason that baseball is credited to. You know, This year, the uh, Red Sox, they tied their... I got to type in Boston Red Sox. The Boston Red Sox tied their 
all-time win record in their 154th game, and then they got their 106th win, breaking their record from 106 years ago, all script. That's the thing you have to understand. Every single game is scripted to make all of these rituals perfect every night as they are. That's why when you learn this code, you can see that the entire season is scripted. That's the only way it's possible to have, you know, the Brewers getting their 45th road win in the playoff and then the Rockies doing the same thing the next night. It's because the entire season is a script. And, and you guys should just see that as the sports fans. I mean, did you see the replays last night? Why are we having our, why are we having our time wasted watching these umpires go over and watch a booth replay and then coming out and making another bullshit call. I mean, how many calls did the Cubs get last night just so the game could be this wrist tight narrative? I mean, it was just, and it's that way with the NFL too. It's like, what the fuck are they looking at? You're watching the replay and then you're coming back and telling me that's the bullshit call that you have now? <laughs> because the whole goddamn game is a script and it's meant to piss you off and it's meant to mock you and it's meant to make you pull your hair out and drink more beer. These people who run the leagues know what they're doing psychological warfare out here now hold on let's type in major league baseball i'm not done yet major league baseball 162 with the alphabetic order remember baseball is 162 when you flip the alphabetic order around see that major league baseball with the alphabetic order is 162 like 162 games in the season and there's another 63 like june 3rd the 154th day of the year and remember last year, not this, not this baseball season, but last year. Go back and look it up. June 3rd, it was the day of the first no-hitter, which was all synced up with the murder of the Marlins player. Covered it very thoroughly. And it was also the day that the Major League Baseball set a record for most grand slams in a day. June 3rd is the 154th day of the year. Grand slam, 154. But hold on, Major League Baseball. What else jumps out here? 117, when you write out 13, it equals 117. Big geometry number. Notice the 351. That's the 26th triangular number, 26. Why does that matter? That number's so boss in this language. Game is 26. Ball game, 26. The game is God for most people. God, 26. In Hebrew, the word God equals 26. In English, the word God equals 26. If you write out the word letter, I don't know what's going on with my keyboard here. If you write out the word letter, it equals 26. 26 letters in the English alphabet, and not arbitrarily. The belief from Kabbalah is that God created the world by merging the number with the letter. And, you know, just for um, a little lesson, teach you something really cool about the word number. Notice number has six letters in it. Six letters. And out of these four ciphers right here, the most important is this one. The alphabetic order and the rules of numerology. This dark blue one. Number equals 28, right? 28 is a perfect number. The first perfect number is six. There's six letters in number. The next perfect number is 28. And then the next perfect number, if I'm not mistaken, is 496. It's a way bigger number. So six and 28, and then a long ways to the next perfect number. If you don't know what perfect numbers are, just look them up. They're the numbers where the divisors of the number sum to themselves. But six and 28, the first two. And again, you should know that this code's biblical. Man equals 28. Mankind made on the sixth day. You know, made in the image of God who's perfect. According to the Bible. By the way, you guys, Holy Bible. Gematria 45 and 45. Holy Bible. Four letters in holy. Five letters in Bible. Nine letters total. If you had one through nine, it equals 45. The reason why is because the knowledge in the Bible comes from something older, it comes from Hermeticism. And Hermetic knowledge teaches about the seven principles of Hermeticism. Notice Hermetic is 45 and 45. One of those lessons is the lesson of vibration. Everything carries a vibration, every letter, every number. And that vibration has a real impact on everything, including human behavior. That's why there's such a thing as numerology and people having beliefs in numerology and practicing numerology and using numerology and carrying out rituals in numerology. This stuff is not arbitrary, not at all, not in the least. For you biblical people out there, I'm sure you noticed that Holy Bible equaled 153. I'm sure you know about the miraculous catch of 153 fish. 153 is the 17th triangular number. Notice the word God. Notice the God of the Old Testament, L. God and L, 17. You had one through 17, 153. So anyway, 
For those of you, the next time you go to Wrigley, think twice. Wasn't a coincidence either that last night, number 45 closed it out. And uh, just to show you how scripted it really all is, you know, they're talking about how October makes heroes out of everybody. Yeah, contrived heroes, contrived scripts. Hold on. I just want you to see something here. Look up the box score. Look up the box score. Unless I linked it, we can just do it. Here, let's just, I, I'll just show it to you so you don't have to take my word for it. I want you to see, oh shit, that's not what I wanted. Show you last night's box score, and I want you to see how many pitches were thrown in the game by both pitching staffs, because again, I've been exposing this for years. You know, the first no-hitter this year had 108 pitches. Every game is scripted from the final score to the box score. Everything is perfectly scripted. They're keeping pitch counts. That's why every last bit. The Cubs staff had 186 pitches. This is what I want you to see. They had 186 pitches. Tony Walters was the hero. Notice it was 16 weeks and three days after Tony Walters' birthday. Colorado Rockies equals 163. Like we had that special 163rd game playoff and... Every mainstream media article that did a picture, uh, a story about the 163rd game, every single one only used a picture of the Colorado Rockies. Why? Because Colorado Rockies were the only team with 163 gematria, which happens to be the 38th prime, and Colorado's the 38th state in order of statehood, and they stayed on 38 away losses by beating the Cubs on the road last night. Colorado also equals 38. But anyway, Tony Walters, the hero of the game, his name equals 186. And we had 186 pitches from the Cubbies, you see? And it's this way every time when you learn the code. Yes, all of these players are born and bred to be, named accordingly, birthed accordingly, all for their future role on the planned chessboard of rig sports. These leagues have been planned out decades in advance, been proven this for years straight. It's undeniable if you know what's going on, you know? The people who do this are a lot smarter than you are. Notice that uh, Tony Walters is 26 years old. Very special number. The team that dominates baseball, the Yankees, their name equals 26. The God number. The gods of baseball. By the way, October in New York, perfect gematria, all four ciphers. I'll just show you. Here are the gods of October, the New York Yankees. Check it out. October. Whoops, got to spell right. New York. Look at it. New York 111.39, October 111.39, New York 78.33, October 78.33. You like that? Yankees, they got that God number and that very special cipher. The whole league, a perfect script. Instead of spending your money on beer and rig sports games i suggest you uh sign up at my patreon five dollars a month showing how all the games are rigged and scripted the numbers to look for admittedly i can't call every single game correctly but the games where i don't call them correctly i'll tell you the numbers on the game and usually nine out of ten times the game that i'm wrong about the numbers that i said were on the game they're all the numbers that hit for the game so i can always prove to you how it's scripted sometimes i get the winner backwards but that doesn't happen too often. More often than not, I'm right on the money. Because the scripts are usually pretty predictable. And for all you sports fans, I don't know how you sit there and let the announcers just mock your ass every single time. They couldn't have scripted it any better. Who wrote the script today? What an exciting finish. You know, they say that shit to every fucking game. Joe Buck. Who wants to listen to that cocksucker Joe Buck? Everybody hates that motherfucker. You know why he's in there? You know why they got the same group of shit brain announcers for all these sports? Because they're all in on it. The players, the coaches, the announcers, they're all in on it. And how often does the announcer know what's going to happen next? This guy hasn't had a hit since September three months ago. Or, you know, it wouldn't be that. But this guy hasn't had a hit since June 8th. Oh, my God, there it is. He, it's just like, oh, wow. I mean, why did he bring up that point right before he broke it? This guy's made 98 free throws in a row. Oh, shit, he just missed. You know what I mean? 
Sometimes you pay attention and you're not drunk and listen to what they say. You're like, what the fuck? How does he know that stat so fast? I was watching a 49er game one time and this guy crossed the goal line and he said the most bizarre, like, specific stat. As soon as he crossed, I was like, wait a minute. I mean, <laughs> where did he just have that one ready to go? These are the ways I figured out that the sports were scripted. You're just paying attention and having common sense and being an athlete myself and... By the way, like I also said, if you're on my Patreon, I said the uh, Cubs would lose. It's a sacrifice for the Bears. 45 is a huge number there in Illinois. Bears equals 45, alphabetic order. 2 plus 5 plus 1 plus 18 plus 19. That's how you add up the letters there. So, all right, Cubby fans. I expect all, uh, how, how many, hold on. I got to see how many fans sit in the Cubs stadium. Wrigley Stadium Capacity. I expect all of you to be signed up for my Patreon tomorrow. This video better go viral in Chicago. There we go. I expect 41,649 new Patreons tomorrow. Let's get this thing rolling. I need your money so that I can get out the word like a megaphone. We're going to take down these rig sports city by city. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring back legitimate sports. Legitimate sports are going to be way better. They're going to be authentic you're not going to have overpaid assholes from God knows where. Everyone on the team's going to be from your city. I think my camera just froze. Damn it. But I'll get out the word anyway. This is the plan. We're shutting down the rig fake leagues. We're going to use the same stadiums that already exist. You know, we paid for them with our taxpayer dollars in most cases anyway. These billionaire assholes getting us to pay for their stadiums with our tax dollars. What's that about? Making all this money from us, ripping us off, having us pay for the whole goddamn thing. But we're going to take the leagues back. No longer are athletes going to be paid millions of dollars. They're going to be paid a, paid a fair wage. I think that fair wage is, I don't know, baseball, there's a lot of games. Maybe they get paid more because there's so many damn games. But uh, especially if you're a catcher in summer, that's a grueling position. But the plan is we're going to take the leagues back. We're going to get fair wages for players. We're going to have them be from the region, the city. That's the way it should be. I mean, if it's the Chicago Cubs, let's have guys from Illinois. You know? I don't want guys from California playing for the Chicago Cubs. You know what I mean? And the beauty is, the game, it's not going to cost a million dollars to go see. You're not going to have to save up your whole month's income to take your family to the ball game. It's going to be affordable. You know, tickets should cost $5. That's plenty. 40 some thousand people. Everybody's paying $5. City had to pay 200 and some thousand dollars to watch the game. That covers all the players' salaries. Plus, you bought food. We're not going to make beer cost $15 anymore, but we're going to have a limit. Don't want a bunch of drunks crashing on the way home. And, and don't you guys just watch what they do at the end of these sports games? The whole fucking city's police department's all staked out around every exit, everywhere. Arrest, tickets, DUIs. This is the system. Get you drunk, over, overcharge you on the beer, and then write $10,000 DUI tickets. What I'm talking about is making a sensible world. We'll do it through the sports games first because it's got the mind's eye of the masses. All right, until next time.